What's going on guys? We got to talk about some Bitcoin news. We just received 13F filings from the first quarter of this year and institutions are buying into the spot Bitcoin ETFs. We're going to go over that in this article. We're also going to go over the spot Bitcoin ETFs coming from Hong Kong. There's a new article talking about that. And we'll talk about Grayscale or GBTC and how their CEO sees some equilibrium coming. This could be him foreshadowing fees coming down. But let's start this video, guys. If you get something useful out of this, make sure you like, subscribe, ring the notification bell. Check out the links down below for some free stocks and cryptos. And let's look at what's going on. And everything will be down below for you in the description if you want to look at any of these articles I go over. But we just received the latest 13F filings with the SEC, revealing that major institutional investors have been acquiring shares in the new spot Bitcoin ETFs. Now, companies that manage over 100 million in assets under management are required to disclose their equity holdings quarterly through these 13F filings. So any companies under 100 million in assets under management wouldn't be required to post these 13Fs. We might have smaller companies also acquiring bitcoin obviously but it wouldn't be mentioned in these 13f filings some of the largest buyers of the spot bitcoin etfs include park avenue securities which has 9.9 .9 billion in assets under management they bought grayscale's gbtc while a 1.3 billion dollar company inscription capital also acquired shares other institutions like american national bank and wedmont private capital also purchased positions in spot Bitcoin ETFs with these purchases ranging from as low as a few thousand dollars to as much as a few hundred thousand dollars. And as said here, this is a good reminder. These 13 F filings, these are going over the first quarter and Q2 filings are going to be released in August. I do suspect we'll see more companies that are loading up. And these companies add up to $15 billion in assets under management. And you have to remember that there's not a single U S bank that has approved Bitcoin spot ETF trading for any of their offices or any of their clients yet. And those entities seeing hard data like this, seeing how Bitcoin has performed based on a quarter, seeing that companies are buying into Bitcoin, seeing just how much success these spot Bitcoin ETFs have seen. To me, it's clear that some of these old banks, some of these companies that before wouldn't let their clients access crypto, I do think that will soon change. Otherwise, you know, in reality, their clients are going to miss out. Their clients might leave for more crypto friendly entities. And I do think it's a matter of time until more and more of these banks, businesses, brokerages like Vanguard, for instance, I do think it's a matter of time until they're more welcoming to crypto. And as a side note, it's kind of funny that Vanguard has had this stance where they don't want anyone to do anything with the spot Bitcoin ETFs on Vanguard specifically. However, it's interesting that a company like Vanguard holds so much Bitcoin mining stocks holds so many crypto related stocks. It's like they're saying one thing and doing another. Now looking at Bitcoin, we're still trading in this pattern. This pattern ends right around the end of April. The halving is only a week away. This might be a catalyst that can break out of this pattern. Keep an eye on it. Also, anyone looking at getting Bitcoin, believe it or not, there are a lot of people that missed the boat back in 2023, back during 2022. And those times were the best times to buy Bitcoin. The next best time is now. Bitcoin has cooled off quite a bit from being so overbought. And I do think now is definitely a better time to be buying Bitcoin. I think there's potential we head down to 67, 68 and bounce off of this trend line here. But Bitcoin's looking great. You know, the reality is we're only 6% away from setting new all time highs. And it seems like people very quickly adjust to the price of Bitcoin. If you would have told someone even three months ago that by now Bitcoin would be right around $70,000, they would have said you're crazy. You're full of it. It would have been so hard to believe three, four months ago. But you have people now that are like, Bitcoin's not doing anything. This is so boring. Well, just wait, give it a couple months. I promise you it will not be boring. We also have a new article going over the Hong Kong spot Bitcoin ETFs and regulators are likely to approve the spot Bitcoin ETFs as early as next week. However, the market should not expect anywhere near the type of flows that spot Bitcoin ETF saw in the US. But this is still overall great for Bitcoin. Now, Noel Atchison, the macro analysis and author of Crypto is Macro Now newsletter, said that they will be a big deal. It's not just for the access to hedge funds and family offices based in the region. It's also because of the access it gives to mainland investors. And because of Chinese investors' reluctancy to invest in domestic real estate stocks, given the well-documented troubles in the country's housing market, construction sector, and equities, that has caused a spurred interest in alternative assets like gold. And funny enough, a gold ETF in China was halted earlier this week after its price premium reached 30%. Too much hype. Atchison theorizes that in a similar fashion, there could be a significant flow of funds into Bitcoin. And the founder of Singapore-based analytics firm 10X Research 
I think I talked about this in a previous video, this 10x research at least, um, but they say that the ETFs could raise the probability of a Chinese retail buying frenzy similar to the 2013 bull market where Bitcoin ran to over $1,000 from only $10 in January. And this rally didn't end until China's government banned financial institutions from trading Bitcoin in December. But we should not expect anywhere near the type of flows we've seen in the US, as said by Velt Lond, the senior analyst of K33 Research. And the two futures-based Bitcoin ETFs listed in Hong Kong, for example, have seen solid growth this year, more than doubling their assets in Bitcoin terms. However, their combined size is still less than 2,000 Bitcoin or just 2% of the US-based uh, futures ETFs. And I quote, the small size of Hong Kong futures ETFs compared to the US is, in our opinion, a signal to the market that Hong Kong ETFs should see less exuberant inflows than those witnessed in the US. While it's likely to be way, way, way less scale compared to the spot Bitcoin ETFs coming out of US, this still will provide overall buying pressure. This is still overall good for Bitcoin. Now let's talk about Grayscale for a little bit. And you guys know I was talking about Grayscale and how iBit is very likely to surpass them very soon. Probably somewhere around 10 days or so away, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. But they are right around $3 billion from flipping each other. Now, we have here that the Grayscale CEO says Bitcoin ETF outflows are reaching an equilibrium. Michael Sonnenschein said that some of the selling connected to settlements of bankrupt crypto companies like FTX is largely behind us. And daily outflows from GBTC have fallen significantly since hitting 600 million in March. Now they're anywhere from 150, 300 million in outflows still outflows. Another reason for these outflows of GBTC is the higher fees. They have the highest fees of all the spot Bitcoin ETFs. However, and those of you that have been around here for a while, those of you that know what's going on, Sunshine has said last month that he expects the fund's fees to decrease over time. Maybe now's the time. Better time now than any. We also have an article talking about the Vanex CEO and how he says that 90% of these spot Bitcoin ETF inflows are still retail. And Jan Van Eck said, I was surprised when talking about the spot Bitcoin ETF inflows, but I don't think it's traditional investors yet. I think 90% of the flows are retail. You've had some Bitcoin whales and some other institutions move some assets in, yes, but they were already exposed to Bitcoin. Van Eck also said that the next month could see the arrival of some major institutional investments from banks and traditional firms, but that the Bitcoin ETF landscape was still in its infancy. It's still so dang early. The CEO also added, and this is important, that no US banks have officially approved or allowed their financial advisors to recommend Bitcoin to date. When slash if we start seeing these approvals from the US banks, this is gonna open the floodgates to a whole new set of investors into the spot Bitcoin ETFs. I do think it's a matter of time. Moving right along, I wanna show you guys CleanSpark. Most of the miners in general are somewhat flat. It's a pretty boring day today, to be honest. We have something potentially approaching here for CleanSpark. And it's something that we didn't see until the end of the last cycle, right around uh, September here. You see this golden cross. It was quickly followed by a death cross. We were pretty much in the end of our rally here. But here's something coming much earlier this time around. A potential golden cross on the weekly. Here's the 50 MA and the 200 MA. They are pretty dang close to crossing. I would argue that if we can get some good upward momentum in the next month, two months, we will see this weekly golden cross within a few months time. Looking at the four hour, you'll see we're still following this kind of a descending, broadening pattern, descending channel. And we once again, very briefly broke under $15. We are back over $15. It seemed like the market quickly picked it back up, but keep an eye on that $15 area. If we find it as resistance, if we come back under it and can't break back over it again, look for that 14. It was a previous peak on a last run back in 2023 on our last huge run we had. That was the peak, that was the resistance there. It was also a bouncing off point when we broke out on that huge good earnings on that breakaway gap. I do think now is a good time to be buying CleanSpark. We have a little over a week away from the halving. There might be some more deep dark red days. Be ready with some cash on the side. But you know, you gotta be taking advantage of CleanSpark when it's down like this. We are down 40% from our recent peak. I do think the clock is ticking to load up on these Bitcoin miners. And I do believe shortly after the halving, they will start rallying. It might take a few days after the halving, might take a few weeks, but it is going to happen. And do you guys think I'm wrong? Do you think the miners will keep tanking after the halving? Is the halving not priced in yet? Remember, the market is forward looking. I do believe once we get past the halving, this thing that's seen as a negative catalyst will now be behind us. And all that's in front of us is Bitcoin continuing to appreciate in value throughout 2024 and into 2025. These Bitcoin miners are going to see massive profitability this time around. 
And miners like CleanSpark and Cypher, for example, were pulling in profitable quarters when Bitcoin was at an average of $35,000. Bitcoin doesn't have to move up much from here for many of the Bitcoin miners to see profitability after the halving. I would argue that at an $80,000 Bitcoin, the vast majority of these Bitcoin miners would be profitable, but we're going to just have to wait and see in the coming months on where things go. But thanks as always for watching, guys. Hopefully you're loading up on the Bitcoin miners. I do think time is running out there and they aren't going to be this discounted for much longer. And thanks again for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.